All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. I thought in today's video we would make it short and sweet and we would talk about Smith. And I've done other videos now on Smith. I've really promoted it over the years. We've, we've talked a lot about it. Um, you know, it really is a fantastic fig. And I think, first off, the flavor, which we're gonna touch on, is incredible. I have a number of my trees now, actually, I think all of them, that have come out of the greenhouse, they're in containers, they got an early head start to the season, they're now fruiting in the first week of August. And uh, they're actually really, really tasty, just because the weather now is, is almost perfect fig weather, or as perfect as I can get it here. Um, and obviously it's a very tasty variety, but, but also I wanna to touch on the production because a lot of people claim that Smith just isn't a very productive variety and that's just not true. Uh, my claim is that it, it is a productive variety, but the problem is it needs a lot of light to set these fruit buds. So if you're not willing to open up the canopy, really put these branches here on a nice angle. As you can see, here's my tree. I've really tried to open the center and bend these branches and really stake them. You can see this branch here was staked almost horizontally this year to try to open that up try to get more light in here what the problem is with smith is that i think not only does it require more light to set the fruit buds it also tends to really just grow upright and especially if you don't have you know longer scaffolds um, that kind of eventually get away from each other you're really creating yourself a problem your tree is really creating a problem and if you don't come in here unfortunately and intervene and really change the angle and the shape of your tree um, you could just have a lot less production than everybody else you know so you know age also comes into play here but you could just see i mean pretty much across the board i think this tree had about 50 figs on it which is pretty darn good i think uh, considering we still have a, a pretty large amount of area that we could fill in with branches over time. Although this is a quite an old Smith tree that I have, it definitely doesn't take up as much light as it potentially can. The more you maximize that light, the better the production is. So it's really that simple. And um, just across the board this year, by changing those, the angle of my branches on my Smith trees, I've seen a huge improvement um, across the board. I have another Smith right in here it's really difficult to get over there and show it to you guys that's a bit more mature uh, like this tree and it's also quite productive i have some younger ones here against this this wall and um, they're unfortunately not as productive as i'd like them to be but considering their age and considering we're just now really getting the form straightened out this year um, i'm not really upset at all so I think just for the record, just for people to, um, you know, kind of set the record straight, this is the change that I've made and it's made a huge difference. And therefore, you know, people saying or claiming that Smith is just not productive is just straight up wrong. Um, now, is it more productive than other varieties? Well, that's a good question. I think personally, the more, um, the less light that it requires actually to set those fruits, the more productive it could potentially be. So a fig like, you know, Hardy Chicago or Celeste really doesn't need a ton of light to set those fruit buds. And you can have a greater density of those branches uh, that's reaching the same amount of light in a given area, but in that given area, you have uh, more branches. Because you have more branches, you then have more fruit. Whereas Smith in that given area, because it needs so much light, you have to bend the branches really far away from each other, really limit the number of branches. You could be seeing less branches in that given area. Therefore, there's less production, less fruits. So I wanna just really touch on the flavor of Smith. I just have two of them here. I ate one a couple days ago that was perfect. It was mind-blowingly good. Across the board though, on about five-ish of my Smith trees, they're all fruiting at this point. It will be interesting, I think, to compare, you know, what those younger trees, the fruits on the younger trees is like compared to uh, this mature tree here. 
But, you know, just know that, oh my God, that looks so good. Just know that as it gets older, of course, the fruits are gonna be better. Uh, they're gonna look more like they should. Um, some people, you know, comment about how Smith is an ugly fig. It's not an ugly fig. This is one of the most beautiful figs I have. It depends on where you live. It depends on where you're growing Smith. You get the sugar spots that Smith is notorious for in a very humid climate. You can see the one on the bottom has got pools of honey in it. So this fig actually produces a lot of its own nectar. And the one on the top is a little bit less ripe, but it is shockingly beautiful inside and out. And I think it's beautiful on the outside because really what it, it does is it produces this green or yellow undertone. And then over top as it ripens, it starts to turn dark. So if you're really wanting to know if your Smith is super well ripened, you can always tell by the, the skin color or if it's mature, you got the right nutrients. You can usually tell by the outside because it's dark purple. You're starting to get those darker colors. Now, what I want to talk about in terms of the flavor is, so I'll just take a bite real quick. It's just so good in terms of one really key thing. This is a fig that has really nice stickiness to it. I think it's quite thick. Uh, the pulp is quite thick, so it's it's not on the level of something like a cold dom that is really thick, like a, like, a can, like a pancake batter or a cake. This is quite jammy, but the pulp is so sticky that it really coats your tongue and really gives you this amazing mouthfeel experience. The texture is just super, super good. Um, and then of course the flavor, it's quite an intense berry flavor. There's some acidity. It's a little sharp. It's just so smooth, exquisite. And that coatingness of your tongue is really so impressive that you don't normally find that in most figs. There are others, of course, that I've documented and I talk a lot about. I think that's really what separates the amazing figs, the amazing tasting figs from the bad ones. If you go into my spreadsheet down in the description of this video, you'll see I have a, a flavor profile section there on the first, the first sheet. At the end is a section called Elegant Berry. And uh, you have figs in there like Azores Dark. Uh, you could probably put Malta Black in there if, if it's not already in there. Things like Italian 258, Black Madeira. Um, I think uh, Smith is in there, Borgia Soak Grease, Violet Sapor. Um, there's a number of these figs that I have in that list and I'll continue hopefully if I can remember to find some time to add to that list. But there, there are certain figs that just because they coat your tongue like that, in my opinion, they're just elegant. They're exquisite. They have that characteristic that you're looking for that uh, really is just next level you know, um, in terms of a, just a fresh eating experience. So for me, it's so hard to beat this fig, guys. Um, I highly recommend it. Of course, I've been trying to promote it for years, and I know a lot of you guys love it, and a lot of people are kind of catching on now. It just really, you can tell it like, it like glistens, but it, it also really kind of glistens on your tongue. You know, there's just something about it that like a nice wine coats your mouth and really leaves a, a lasting imprint of the flavor. This one certainly does. And I, I've eaten figs after this and it always distorts the flavor, believe it or not, because this fig Smith is still on your tongue um, for a while after you eat it. So if, even if you eat something else or you eat another fig, it really does change in a sense the flavor of uh, what you're eating. Um, it's pretty nuts. So anyway, guys, there's a little bit on the production. There's a little bit on the flavor. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for more, uh, fig reviews and fig related videos on the channel. See you for the next one.